Okay, uh, welcome to the uh, video on uh, lesson two, parallelograms. Uh, and so at this point, uh, hopefully you have uh, attempted the um, introductory activity to parallelograms using the congruency uh, of triangles to prove the characteristic uh, characteristics of uh, parallelograms. Uh, and then you've also watched the GSP um, uh, presentation uh, that uh, highlights what you should have learned from that activity. So what I want to do is start uh, this lesson by just going through and highlighting the theorems that we should, uh, or theorems and definitions that we should have already covered um, by virtue of the GSP and the introductory activity. So first off, um, we've got our definition of a parallelogram, a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. Uh, from this, uh, using our uh, congruency of triangles, uh, we were able to prove uh, the theorem 6.3, namely that both pairs of opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. Theorem 6.4, that both pairs of opposite angles of a parallelogram are congruent. Uh, and theorem 6.7, which says that the diagonals of a uh, parallelogram uh, bisect each other. Okay, so what I want to do now is take a couple of minutes to explain these additional theorems, uh, really corollaries, spin-offs, of the previous theorems um, so that you can understand these and use these as reasons in a proof uh, at a later stage. So again, a lot of these are corollaries. Uh, remember, a corollary is uh, similar to the idea of a postulate, but uh, a corollary comes uh, directly from the theorem. So it's kind of a result or a consequence or a spin-off of the actual theorem. Okay, so uh, this theorem states that if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, its consecutive angles are supplementary. So this is really an application of the fun rule, specifically the U, the consecutive interior angles uh, uh, theorem, which says that the consecutive interior angles between parallel lines uh, are supplementary. And so a parallelogram uh, has both pairs of opposite sides parallel. And essentially what this means is we've got... Um, We've got a U over here, which is causing Y and X to add up to 180. Uh, if I turn uh, the U sideways, uh, once again, angle J and angle M are going to be supplementary. Uh, if I turn the U upside down, uh, once again, we've got angle J plus angle K, X and Y once again, adding to 180 degrees. So if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, it's consecutive. Uh, uh, so X and Y or M and J are consecutive as opposed or, or joining as opposed to opposite. Uh, the consecutive uh, uh, angles are going to be supplementary. Okay, so that takes care of theorem 6.5. Moving to 6.6, if a parallelogram has one right angle, oh, let's try not to cross that out, one right angle, uh, then it's going to end up with four right angles. Once again, uh, this is just, uh, again, an application, actually, of the consecutive interior angle rule. Um, uh, if uh, angle J is 90 degrees, uh, if we have consecutive interior angles between parallel lines, that means they must add up to 180 degrees, which means angle M must be uh, 90 degrees as well. Then I'm going to draw my U in this way. We know that J, M, and K, L are parallel because it's a parallelogram by definition, uh, and therefore angle M plus angle L must be 180, and therefore angle L must be 90 degrees, and uh, using the exact same logic, uh, we can establish also that angle K. And so if it's a parallelogram and it has a right angle at one of its vertices, uh, then it actually ends up having four right angles. Okay. And moving on, we're going to jump over the page. This uh, theorem we've actually indirectly dealt with. Um, and so what we did was uh, we showed that uh, if you have a parallelogram, you can prove congruency between the, the two triangles that are created when you draw in a diagonal. Uh, and so this theorem has already been taken care of. Uh, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, uh, and each diagonal uh, separates the parallelogram into congruent triangles. And so we've already taken time to prove the congruency of those triangles. Okay, and then the last little bit here is just to explain um, 
uh, the biconditional nature of each of these theorems. And so biconditional really just means um, that if the theorem works in one direction, it also works in the other. So if uh, uh, a parallelogram has both pairs of opposite sides congruent, um, then if we reverse that, if a quadrilateral has both pairs of opposite sides congruent, it is a parallelogram. Uh, if it is a parallelogram, then both pairs of its opposite sides are congruent. And what this does is it establishes ways for us to prove that a quadrilateral is in fact a parallelogram. And so you can prove it by definition. You can prove that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. You can prove that both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Or you can prove that the diagonals bisect each other. All of those prove congruency. Uh, you can also prove by definition, of course. Um, and the final way uh, is encapsulated in theorem 612. And the final way is uh, if you have one pair of opposite sides, both parallel and congruent, that is enough to show that it's a parallelogram. Uh, very quickly, I'll show you why. If I were to draw in diagonal AC, uh, we would have an alternate interior angle. Uh, we would have a reflexive side. We would have side angle side congruency between the two triangles. And of course, uh, uh, once we've established congruency of those two triangles, we can show very easily that uh, AD and BC would be congruent by CPCTC. And we've now shown that uh, this is a parallelogram. And so uh, what, we, what we have is if we have one pair of opposite sides, both parallel and congruent, that's kind of counted as a fifth possible way of proving congruency, uh, sorry, proving that a quadrilateral is in fact a parallelogram. Okay, so a total of five ways. All right, so that's the theoretical background. And what we want to do now is move into the application of that in the form of our examples. Okay, so example one. Uh, use the diagram at the right to find our values of x, y, and z. Uh, take note, of course, that this is a parallelogram by definition, and therefore we'll have all of the characteristics. Uh, and I'm going to mark the key ones in order for us to solve for x. We, of course, have that a, b, and c, d are congruent. And so 2x plus 13 must equal 3x plus 4. Um, in order to solve for uh, uh, z or z over here, we have uh, the, the property that says the diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. Um, and so 2z plus 4 is going to be half of bd. And we have been given this information over here that bd is 42. So the entire length is 42. And that allows us to say that 2z plus 4 must equal 21, and so that's the property that the diagonals bisect each other. And lastly, we're going to do uh, uh, an angle calculation, and so a different property, and so we have uh, angle BAF is 39 degrees, we have angle FAD is 4Y plus 5, and we are given angle BCD, B to C to D, this angle in here is 63 degrees, the final property that we need is, of course, that the opposite angles uh, of a uh, parallelogram are congruent. And so 63 is equal to 39 plus 4y plus 5. And now we have our three equations, each separate from each other, that will allow us to solve for x, y, and z. And so what I'm going to do is just pause the video for a moment to take care of the solving of these just in the interests of time. Okay, so uh, in the interest of time, I've just gone ahead and solved each of these equations. So isolating x, we have uh, x equals 9. Over here, we have 21 less 4 is 17, divide by 2. 17 over 2, which you can give your answer as 17 over 2, or 8.5 if you prefer. And solving over here for y, uh, 63 minus 39 minus 5 leaves us with 19, divided by 4, 19 over 4. Or you can write your answer as 4.75. If you are using a decimal, round to two decimal places or leave the answer exact, uh, which is what I've done in this case. Okay, moving on to example two. So what we have here is kind of an angle web problem. We're looking for missing angles. Uh, this is going to use some of the properties of parallelograms uh, and is also going to use some uh, rules from previous uh, units. So, so firstly, of course, angle Y, we can find relatively easily because that's a linear pair. So angle Y is going to be 180 
less 34 degrees, uh, which is going to give us 146 degrees. Uh, and so I'll fill that in on the diagram, 146 degrees. Um, since uh, this is given as a parallelogram, we do have our parallel sides and we could use rules like AIA uh, and our co-interior angles if necessary. Uh, we're going to use vertical angles over here. So 34 degrees, 34 degrees. Uh, we're going to use that angles of a triangle add up to 180. So here we have our triangle over here. Uh, let me just clean that up over there. And so 180 less 90 less 34. And that's going to allow us to find angle X. And angle X uh, in this case is going to be uh, 56 degrees. So 56 degrees. Uh, which, of course, is also going to equal angle W. So W is also 56 degrees using alternate uh, uh, interior angles. Uh, and so let me just show you over here. We've got our alternate interior angles over there. Uh, so W and X are equal. And then uh, lastly, we can use our U. So consecutive interior angles uh, between parallel lines uh, must add up to 180 and so uh, 180 minus the 56 minus the 20 degrees is going to give us angle uh, Z or angle Z uh, and so that should give us uh, if my algebra is any good 104 degrees okay so the next part of the question is asking which of these are um, going to be parallelograms um, and so we're going to uh, be looking for which of these satisfy uh, the requirements. We have five options, remember, both pairs of opposite sides congruent, both pairs of opposite angles congruent, both pairs of opposite sides parallel, bisecting diagonals, or one pair of opposite sides, both parallel and congruent. Okay, so in this particular case, we have both pairs of opposite sides congruent, and so uh, this is definitely a parallelogram, uh, and we can put the theorem number in, uh, or you can just write an abbreviation of the theorem. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, both pairs of opposite sides uh, are congruent, and that's the reason it's a parallelogram. Okay, moving on to example B. Uh, in this particular case, we have one pair of opposite si uh, sorry, opposite angles congruent. Um, we don't know what angle B is, and we don't know what angle D is. And remember, we are not allowed to make the assumption that BC is parallel to AD or that AB is parallel to DC. And therefore, in this particular case, uh, we have to say no, not because it cannot be, but because we don't have enough information to conclude that this is a parallelogram unless we knew either angle B or angle D. Okay, so the answer to that one is no. Uh, if we come over here to C, so we've been given uh, angle BCA is congruent to angle CAD. Uh, this in turn allows us to know that AD is parallel uh, to BC. Um, we also have a reflexive side AC. We have AB congruent to DC. Um, but that is all the information that we have. And hopefully you realize in this particular case, we do not have congruency of these two triangles. And the reason we do not have a congruency of these two triangles is that we actually have uh, uh, SSA. Uh, the angle is not included between the two sides that we can show to be congruent. And therefore, we must say no in this particular case because we do not have enough information to prove with certainty that this is, in fact, a parallelogram. Okay. And then uh, the last one. Uh, uh, let's look at the markings that we've got. So we've got one pair of parallel sides. Uh, we have a 90 degree angle here. So what I'm going to do is begin uh, by using the parallel lines to find the consecutive interior angle. So I know that they add up to 180 and so I am able to conclude that angle B has to be 90 degrees. If angle B is 90 degrees and angle C is 90 degrees, uh, I'm also able to conclude as a result of that that uh, side BA and CD must be parallel because their consecutive interior angles add up to 180 degrees and in this case I can in fact show that this is a parallelogram uh, and that is in fact 
by definition of a 